This video is designed to complement your complete do-it-yourself installation guide. By carefully reading the guide and watching this easy to understand video, you will be able to install your cool attic whole house fan, speed control, and its automatic shutter with ease and confidence. Properly installed, you can expect years of trouble-free, money-saving service. Before you actually commence installation, here are a couple of steps that will speed up the process. Gather these simple tools, a folding ruler or retractable steel tape, and a sharpened pencil or marker. An electrical powered circular or saber saw will make the job easier. If you don't have one of these, the task can be accomplished with a simple keyhole saw. The only other power tool required is an electric drill with a one quarter inch bit. Small hand tools required are a screwdriver, hammer, handsaw, and sharp utility knife. Lastly, you will need a six to eight foot folding step ladder. Make sure the ladder lock is in place before climbing. Safety comes first. To make the installation of your cool attic whole house fan and automatic shutter a stunning success, adhere to the rules. Use eye protection, wear well-fitted gloves, and use an inexpensive respirator mask to avoid inhaling dust or other particles. You can buy all of the items you need at the store where you purchased your fan. Start material inventory with two and one half pounds of number 12D common nails or number 16 box nails and about 30 ringed sheetrock nails. Next, add 12 to 16 number 8 decking screws two and one half inches long. These items are all that are required to properly secure your cool attic whole house fan and automatic shutter. Select your framing lumber size to match the dimensions of your ceiling joists. Two eight foot pieces should be adequate to face even the largest fan. Your facing lumber can be of the same dimension as in this case, or two inches by four inches, two inches by six inches, or two inches by eight inches. You may wish to consult a qualified electrician for this next step. If your fan is a belt drive model 24V, 30V, or 362BD, two conductor Romex cable with ground should be your choice. If you are installing a direct drive model 242DD, 302DD, or junction boxes, use three conductor Romex cable with ground. These cables are designed to meet most local electrical codes. Always be sure to comply with local electrical codes. For your cool attic whole house fan to operate at peak efficiency and properly cool the fan motor, you must have openings from the attic to the outside that are approximately nine and one half square feet, depending on fan size. Please study this graphic to determine the exhaust vent area necessary for the cool attic whole house fan you have chosen. Under E vents, Soffit vents and rectangular gable vents can be easily installed to provide an adequate exhaust area so air can be drawn through the house. It is important to remember that you can only pull through as much air as you can exhaust. You want to select a site in your home that will provide uniform airflow from all the rooms. Usually a central hallway is best. After determining where you would like the installation, check the attic above the chosen site. The area must be clear of ducts, piping, and wiring. Measure to be sure you have at least 36 inches in length, by 36 inches in width, by 36 inches in height of open, unobstructed space between the attic floor and the roof. An area less than 36 inches could create a problem with fan performance. Locate a position that is convenient and out of the reach of children for your direct drive whole house fan high, low, off switch. Near a light switch will help accommodate wiring. If you have chosen a belt drive whole house fan, it comes with a variable speed control. The procedure will be the same. Now, let's prepare the shutter opening. First, determine which installation you prefer. The no-cut joist, where you leave all the joist in place, or the preferred installation, where you saw out the joist that crosses the approximate center. The opening size is the same for either belt or direct drive. If you prefer the no-cut joist option, you must align the center joist with the center of the stationary shutter vane. If you are installing the 24-inch fan, the stationary vane is offset from the center of the shutter. 
observe that there are two movable vanes on one side of the stationary vane and three on the other. You can only use the no-cut joist installation with a 36-inch fan if the joist centers are 24 inches apart or greater and there is enough space between the involved joist and any drywall. If you choose the no-cut joist installation, you must find another way of bringing the fan into the attic. It will not fit through the shutter opening because of the center joist. Always install the shutter horizontally. Study this chart, or the one in your installation manual. They are the same. Select your fan model and note the corresponding shutter opening size. Before making any marks or drilling any holes, take the time to be sure the shutter is mounted centrally in the hall. The joist may not be located in the proper place, so check your ceiling location in relation to the joist position before making any marks or drilling any hole. Remove all insulation from the attic floor above the installation site. Keep the insulation for later use, beginning with one joist as the end of the shutter opening. Drill a one quarter inch hole through the attic floor at each of the two corners of the opening. Make sure they are flush to the end joist. Connect the two holes with a straight line. You have already determined the measurements from the size chart, so using the line as a guide, draw the other three sides. Now drill one quarter inch holes through the sheetrock at the other two corners. Always take the time to double check your measurements. Make sure the corners are square. If everything checks out, put on your protective equipment. Carefully follow the lines with your saber saw or keyhole saw and avoid cutting into the joist. If you use a circular saw, set the shoe adjustment to a cutting depth equal to the sheetrock thickness to prevent cutting the joist. Watch your balance and carefully remove the sheetrock or gypsum board from the opening. If you choose a cut joist installation, this is how it is done. If you have chosen the no cut joist installation, please be patient for a few moments while we review the joist removal technique. Nail or screw two temporary supports at each end of the opening. They should be angled to allow room for proper sawing. This will help prevent sheetrock cracking. A two inch by six inch piece of lumber will be fine. The bridge boards should overlap the joist by about six inches. It is important to recess your cut by one and one half inches from the edge of the shutter opening. It is also important the joist be cut perpendicular to permit a snug fit of the header to the joist and a flush fit to the edge of the shutter opening. This is critical to ensure the shutter vanes don't rattle. Thanks for your patience. Now let's move on to step number four. You have already chosen lumber to match the size of your ceiling joist. Cut the four boards to properly fit your no-cut joist installation. Simply nail the boards into place using number 12D common nails. If you choose a cut joist installation, you will have only two boards of approximately double the length to install. For a quieter fan with less vibration, we suggest building an additional two inch by six inch box with the same inside dimensions as the whole house fan wood frame. Simply align the inside of this box with a fan frame. Use number 12D nails or two and one half inch deck screws to secure. Now secure the sheetrock edges to the frame using one and one half inch ring nails. Next, remove the two inch by six inch lumber you used as a bridge across the joist. This two by six could be used for the facing around the framed shutter opening. Cut the end pieces of the facing from the 2 inch by 6 inch lumber. These pieces should be the same length as the width of the shutter opening. Now cut the side pieces. The length should be equal to the length of the shutter openings plus 11 inches. With your number 12D common nails, anchor the facing in place. Congratulations! You are ready to mount your cool attic whole house fan to its supporting frame. We will move to step number six shortly. But before we do, please listen carefully. If your fan is a belt drive model CA24V, CA30V, or CA362BD, the motor and the motor base 
are mounted on the bottom of the tubing frame for shipping. Before installing the fan assembly, remount the motor and the motor base on top of the fan frame and adjust the belt to medium tension. Remember, the belt adjustment is important. Over tightening will cause premature wear on the motor and loss of performance. If your fan is a direct drive model CA242DD or CA302DD, you must invert the fan blade before operating the fan. The fan blade is in the proper position when the center hub is up. It is shipped inverted to prevent damage. Once installed correctly, make certain it is tightly fastened to the shaft. Okay, we are ready for step number six. Earlier, I mentioned that you would have to bring your fan into the attic via an alternate route if you choose the no-cut joist installation. If you have removed the joist, simply angle the unit diagonally and push it into the attic. Place it on the facing with the wood frame down and the plastic shroud up. Before securing the assembly, a handy tip is to place a foam strip between the facing and the fan housing. This virtually eliminates the possibility of any noisy vibration. Center the fan assembly on the facing. Draw alignment marks on the facing. Use the marks as a reference in case the fan moves during mounting. Make sure you have eight two and one half inch deck screws or number 12D nails to toe nail the fan assembly base at two points on each side onto the facing. Recheck against the marks to make sure the assembly has not shifted. Now, place small alignment marks on the ceiling. Once installed, the shutter frame will cover these. Measure 7 eighths of an inch from the edges of the shutter opening. This will indicate the outer edges of your shutter frame. Install the shutter using the wood screws provided with your fan. Before proceeding, disconnect the power supply at the service entrance or breaker circuit. If you are installing models 24V, 30V, or 362BD, use the two conductor wire with ground. When wiring all direct drive fans, such as models 242DD and CA302DD, use a three conductor wire with ground. Make sure the wire you purchase meets all the requirements of your local electrical code and fire code. First, select the location for your new switch. You will need to consider installing your switch either in an existing switch box or beside one already installed in your wall. One thing to consider is to make sure the switch is out of the reach of small children. To wire direct drive models CA242DD and CA302DD, refer to the schematic on your screen. These units have two fixed speeds, high and low. Center position will turn the unit off. Please be patient, we will address the variable speed shortly. Connect the hotline to the center terminal number 2 on the two-speed switch. Then, connect the black wire from the motor's high-speed line to terminal number 3 on the rocker switch. Last, connect the red wire from the motor's low-speed line to terminal number 1 of the rocker switch. You may switch the high and low positions if you wish. Don't apply power just yet. Rotate the fan blade by hand to be sure no tools or other materials are in its path. As we pointed out in step number five, if your fan is a direct drive, be sure you have inverted the blade from the way it was shipped from the factory and that the fan blade is fastened securely to shaft. Be sure your fireplace damper is closed to prevent dirt and soot from being drawn into the house. Don't use your fireplace and fan at the same time. Your fan will operate better with appropriate doors and windows open. All belt drive whole house fans have variable speed controls. Look at figure number eight. Installation of the control requires that you connect the hot wire from your supply to one of the black wires of the control. The other black wire of the control will connect to the black wire of the fan motor. The common wire of your supply line will connect to the white wire of the fan motor. Be sure to wire the ground wire of your supply line to the ground screw located in the terminal box of the motor. There are low voltage areas in the United States. Your fan was designed to operate at 115 to 120 volts. 
If you notice improper operation of your shutters, check the line voltage and follow the instructions in step number 9 of your installation manual. Your cool attic fan has a long life motor. Its bearings are sealed to assure proper lubrication. If you have followed the installation instructions closely, your fan should operate just fine. However, if you notice the motor of the belt drive unit not turning or turning too slow to open the shutters on the low speed, refer to step number 9 of your installation instructions. This will cover the correct adjustment of your solid state control. Congratulations on the selection and installation of a cool attic whole house fan and shutter. Now it's time to sit back and enjoy years of money-saving, reliable service.